Hello everyone, this is Evan Abrams, and in this After Effects tutorial, we're going to be creating this easy topographical pattern right here. It's pretty simple to do, it doesn't take a lot of time, and from what I can tell, it's fairly popular. We'll start by locking down the basic pattern, then we'll look at some variations and different ways to animate this, and then finally we'll wrap it up by looking at some use cases. So hopefully that'll inspire you to uh, go out and make some stuff with this. Well, that'll do it for the top of the tutorial here. Let's open up After Effects and get into it. Let's begin by making a nice big composition, maybe a 4K kind of frame size, something like that. When we're making raster effects driven stuff, I prefer to work large and then scale down later in case I need to preserve some detail. And this can get chunky. This technique is really a classic effect sandwich, heaps of effects layered onto each other, starting with the greatest base of all, fractal noise on a solid layer of any color you like. We'll tweak this up to have higher contrast and maybe scale it a little bit. But don't be too concerned with the specific numbers here. As you'll see, we'll come back and tweak this stuff to taste as we go. So after we have this base, we want to make it less distinct. And we can do this with a little bit of blurring, maybe a fast box blur or a, a gauss blur. We're blurring just to take the detail away. And we want these soft gradients flowing around like hills, high and low points, light and dark points. Now we want to clamp down on those values. A topographic map has lines at elevation points, so every 5, 10, however many feet. So we need to make this into sort of plateaus. And we do that using the posterize effect. How many plateaus we see is going to be down to the level. So you can see how it looks with more or fewer levels. And really, we only care about making lines. So we can use the old find edges effect to bring this together. Find edges will give us just some pixels along where things are changing from one area to the next. It is, however, where things get chunky. Just <laughs> look at these little nasty pixels in here. Ooh, gross. But as you can see, we're really close here. You may want to smooth this out by putting a blur on top of this and perhaps clamping down with some levels or curves on top of that. But now that we have the basic effect here, we can start to tweak it to taste. Going back, we might do something like adjust the blur to help span these lines out or bunch them together. We can go into posterize and make this sort of denser or less dense. And if you go all the way back into that first fractal noise, you can play with the contrast and brightness to get a different character on this faux topography. So now let's look at some variations. First off, let's talk line control. Obviously, you'd like to have a way to thicken or thin out these lines. One way is to just add another instance of find edges. And that kind of works. But there is a way to kind of get rid of this background so we can do more interesting treatments with these lines. So we'll start by adding a shift channels. This will let us assign new alpha information, which is going to tell us which parts of the layer are visible, which are invisible and how much. And we're going to take that alpha information from the luminance value. And that is going to make the white parts solid and the black parts see through. Well, then we can just go ahead and drop an invert in here and put it on the luminance channel so that now problem is solved and we have <laughs> we've got only lines. So now with these lines separated, we can do some things like thinning and smoothing them out uh, using something like matte or simple choker effects. Usually these effects are used for keying, but they can smooth out our alpha situation here and pinch in if you want really narrow lines, or you can use them to kind of bulk out the lines a little bit if you want. Then you might just need to drop a fill on there to get rid of any of this weird little nastiness that's happening in there. Alternatively, though, instead of pushing things out that way, I would recommend you go layer, layer style, and add a stroke on here using layer styles. This will apply a stroke around the alpha bounds of your layer, which can give us a nice clean edge that we can thicken up at our leisure. And with these lines isolated, we can then do things like add a gradient or a bevel or a drop shadow or whatever, because we've got them nice and isolated from the background. And since this is all procedural, we can impact any aspect of this that we want to animate. So if you want this to scroll around like you're looking at a map, you could move the layer, certainly, but I would recommend you offset the noise. You could also scale the noise if you want to zoom in, zoom out. You can mess with the evolution of the noise if you want this to be sort of a rolling, boiling situation. If you want this to seem like we're, we're scanning up and down the hill, you might adjust the brightness and contrast. All aspects of the noise, since it is the base, will affect the rest of this texture. And of course, if you just want to see a new take on the same kind of setup, just go to a new random seed. It's a fresh landscape every time. 
Now how about we have some distinctive shapes coming through, uh, like this text example here. We can push a lot of these effects up onto an adjustment layer, and then we just need to work up the grayscale landscape below that. I've got here a fractal noise and a text layer that is a little bit blurry. The text is all white, and the fractal noise down here is clamped down with a level so it can never be as bright as the text. Then I'm just keyframing the opacity of the text up from 0 to 100, and you can see that it just kind of fades on, nothing to it. But up on that adjustment layer, we've got a blur going on, and then all the same things, the posterize, the find edges, etc. So as the text kind of becomes more distinct, it separates from the landscape, you can see that these lines are being redrawn. I animated the evolution uh, as this is going, so it has a little bit more uh, movement to it, and it kind of smooths out the reveal. But since it's all predicated on what shapes and tone are beneath this effect, you can do literally anything under here and it'll appear to look pretty topo-like. So let's finish off with some examples. Here we have a pretty typical topographical map, very nice. We have some thick lines and some thin lines, much as you would, you know, you'd have, you know, a mark every maybe 10 feet and then a thicker mark every 100 feet. And we can achieve this by making a copy thickening it up and then changing the posterized settings and clamping the values a little bit. Since these are all based off the same fractal, these lines are going to appear in pretty much the same spots. That's going to allow us to thicken or thin them as we like. Then we just layer these over a textured background, fill them with green, maybe add a compass, and we're ready for some orienteering, I guess. Here's an example where we're just taking the pattern and dropping it inside some text. If you want to do something like that, uh, you can just use the text as an alpha mat, which will define the bounds of where we can see this texture. Then we drop a copy of the text underneath to kind of fill in a little bit as you like. Maybe we drop on some gradient ramps to bring out the difference, a little drop shadow, maybe a bevel. Now things are getting a little bit interesting, right, as we kind of lay this up as a component in maybe a more sophisticated treatment. And finally, here's a little bit of uh, futuristic little FUI stuff with some glows, maybe some scan lines made with Venetian blinds. It's a lovely scene, all made from that base topo pattern. I've just also dropped in a little dot grid made with repeaters, a few little menu items, a little scale along the top and side drawn in Illustrator. I guess we've really just made a fancier looking map. So maybe this is two and a half examples. But what will you do with this pattern? Whatever you make with it, I would love to see it. Share it with me on Twitter or tag me on Instagram. I'm at EC Abrams in both of those places. If you have any trouble with any of the stuff we talk about in these videos, let me know in the comments and I will try to get you through. And if this is the kind of thing you like to learn, After Effects Motion design, all that good stuff, then like, subscribe, and make sure you turn on notifications so you don't miss any of the wonderful tutorials. If you like this kind of thing, but also live, you can find me on behance.net and on twitch.tv. I'm at EC Abrams on those places as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you around the internet.